I was one of those agents that went and tried to get him out of the hospital. It was Ricky Steamboat and myself. And um, John had gone through this. I think there was a, they had a hurricane, you know, maybe the year before. Or I, I know there was a hurricane involved in his, his you know, his, his house get flooded and his wife left him. And, you know, just, there was all sorts of stuff going on in, in, in his head. Ray Mysterio is a one-off. I don't care who you are. I don't care how many flips you can do. There's absolutely no one in that style of wrestling in my opinion, is better than Rey Mysterio. So it doesn't devalue a heavyweight title to have it on a, a Bobby Lashley and then. I'm just talking from a stature standpoint, maybe from a style a little bit, onto a Rey Mysterio. As opposed to a US belt or a no, not Continental. Rey. If it was anybody else, I would agree. I would, that, that, you know, because they can't do what Rey does. He was a young kid and, you know, he was like, he was stacking shells in Target, the bottom shelf, of course. But, uh, <laughs> Well, I, he's trapped in a position. There's a hole in the table where his heads pop through, and there's a late night. I've got a good idea. We got all these bugs, and I'm sticking crickets and cockroaches in his mouth and stuff <laughs> like you know, the worms. So it just sort of snowballed from there. That you know, I actually met him in India. We actually done a tour of India, and he came along, John Laurinaitis, and I met him in India. And of course, only seen him sat down, and he's like, you know, I mean, huge. I mean, I never seen anybody that big, really. I mean. Tall, yeah, you can see basketball players, but he, I mean, his arms and chest, he just, you know, and, and, and John said, oh, we're thinking of hiring this guy, we we'll see what he can do, you know. So I guess, you know, we were moving around India there, we didn't actually get him in the ring at that point, which I think we might have should have done. <laughs> do you see something special when you see him for the first time? Uh, no, I didn't. Um, he was on live events before he, you know, got to that TV spot there, and, and uh, you know, I, I spent a bit of time in the ring with him and kept trying to drill into him because we knew that this MVP thing was coming along and kept trying to drill into him. You, <clears throat> if you're going to be MVP, you need to be MVP. You need to, there needs to be something a little bit more special, a little bit more, you know, you know, you, you need to up your game a little bit. We bleed blue, well, they blue, bleed red, you know, it's like it's a definite split there's a definite you know we're better than they are type thing we had to put a stop to it no more video games in the locker room oh is that true yes you know everybody's in there like instead of paying attention to what they should be doing or watching matches or watching someone that could work maybe you can learn something from here watching this instead of going i was asked to smile all the time you know they want me like which is very it was at that time very awkward and very unnatural for me to to be smiling at people you know i was i've been you know, 30 odd years in the business, and I was always, always growling at people. And they rather smiling. Why did smile. they want you to smile? Did they want it to be an ironic thing? Like, yes, the one, you know, like <laughs> smiling while I'm, you know, tearing your throat out type thing. What percentage of the workers today do you think want to be wrestlers? Period. Wrestlers. Not wrestlers today, maybe a country singer tomorrow. Wrestlers. Very few. I think they're all <clears throat> looking to something else. This is a stepping stone for them, they think. And now you've got maybe three ECW matches put on a SmackDown live event. Now that's three SmackDown matches taken out. Now there's talent sitting at home doing nothing. So yeah, there was a little bit of animosity. I think the story got out there that Booker beat Dave up, which is not true. You know, Booker was the one with a swollen eye. Um, and, you know, Booker, Booker didn't want to finish the fight. You know, Dave's going, we're going to sort this out right now. And Booker said, no, I'm going to come to your house, you know, in the dark and all that stuff, you know. The secret to me was not to teach them all the same thing. And I think this is the problem with sometimes a school is you teach a group of wrestlers the same thing. So we all do the same thing. I would individually pick them out and go, here's a couple of moves for you, here's a couple of things you can do. So, you know, that, that was why it all looked different because they, they did different things. In the trailer during those hot and heavy Monday Night Wars, there was a, a TBS monitor on all the time while they were producing their show. Uh, was anyone watching TNA at this time? No. No. <laughs> Thank you.